Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 468. Emotions can make you sick. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health, and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone? The newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. This week we're going to be talking about concepts that were written in a book published by Dr. Don Colbert, MD. The book is called Deadly Emotions, Understanding the Mind-Body-Spirit Connection That Can Heal or Destroy You. And in this book, Dr. Colbert builds a case that our emotional condition contributes to, even causes, Mm -hmm. a lot of the health conditions that we Mm -hmm. experience. And the, the... For my reading, the primary focus of the book is about how stressful our lives are, how much Mm -hmm. stress we live under in today's world. I mean, if you think about it, uh, I I don't know if the connection will fit, but Mm -hmm. a lot of times driving down the highway uh, with other cars passing you 70, 80, 90 miles an hour, Mm -hmm. two feet apart, uh, buses, trucks on either side of you in lanes Mm -hmm. that are too narrow, all going around you. Mm -hmm. That's a stressful experience. And I think about primitive man, you know, hunting or or Mm -hmm. chasing buffalo or whatever, different kinds of stress. Am I going to have dinner tonight? Am I going to be able to feed my family? Mm -hmm. Those are stressors as well. Mm -hmm. But there are stressors that we experience living in this world today in the United States that our ancestors never knew existed, never thought about. We were built for, our bodies were built for short-term stress like The lion is running after us and we have to run and hide or we have to climb a tree and and we use all of our uh, body in a way that answers that stress. It stops your body from actually actually working on healing you and taking care of your cells. It all stops so that you can focus on taking care of that stress and reacting to it. And then it's supposed to stop immediately. What's well, called the flight. That's how we're built. Flight or fight arousal right. mechanism. And when something sudden happens, our adrenal glands flood us with energy with and cortisol. endorphins and cortisol so that our body maximizes its potential to survive. Right. We can lift things heavier than we could lift if we were just lifting a box. We go, oh, that's heavy. People lift cars because they're, right. I mean, to get their the, child the, out from underneath Blood engorges it. your muscle, muscles, your breathing changes, you stop digesting food if you... Right, your mu- muscles actually yeah, break down shifts. after you after you have this unbelievable yeah. strength. So you're actually using your body as food during a fight or flight. Right. So we were meant for this, we were built for this, but we weren't built for every single day, all day long, all night long, stress that is keeping our cortisol going and making us worried and and making us, I call it perseverate. Talk about it all the time, talk about it, and and it keeps it in your mind. That keeps all of those hormones that were meant for a very short period of time to take care of you so you could survive. That wasn't supposed to be all the time. And now we've made it a daily thing. We are in this stress daily. Our baseline resets. Because of the constant endurance of stress and stressors from multiple sources, the standard homeostasis point mm-hmm. of stress in our body resets to a higher level, and our bodies are our adrenal glands are constantly pumping the cortisol and the endorphins out into our bloodstream, and our cells are having to absorb them and process them, and so we get a baseline that is what would have been a crisis line mm-hmm. in the past is now our everyday standard. And we walk around with all that stress. We get TMJ problems. We clench our teeth. Mm-hmm. People go to the dentist. They have nerve issues, uh, stress, reaction, heart, blood pressure goes up, heart attacks. So, are- so the stress you can't fix, but how you respond to stress, you can. You can change how you respond because stress is an external force. Emotions that you feel when you're under stress 
are under your control in a way. You can react to stress in a different way than a way that would make you feel fight or flight. So, Well, so, you train for that. Yeah. I mean, you can train your body to remoderate itself, to calm itself down, mm-hmm. to not have the crisis stress response. You can reframe the situation. Pilots like, train for that all the time. That's right. You know, this happens now instead of going, oh, crap, <laughs> you know, do something. Surgeons do this, train for that. I mean, I way. train for Police officers train disasters. for that. Surgeons train when we're, for that. When you're in the operating room, you never lose it. School, Ever. school teachers train for that? You never, you never, you're, I mean, all of us, but in, in surgery, it's a life or death thing, yeah. you, but you never lose it. Even if something happens or you find something that you didn't plan on finding, it's all about keep keeping your breathing even because everybody around you absorbs your stress right. and making sure that everything happens that can help your patient survive and, and get out of the operating room well. So we are, we're trained to do that over the four years of, um, mm. of OBGYN training, but I found it a, a way to do this in, in the nights that I was on call in labor and delivery. One of the things I would do is just one method of handling stress. We'd be up for 36 hours. So at 3 o'clock in the morning on the first day that you've, you've been up, you've worked all day, you've worked all night, you're still up at 3 o'clock, sitting in labor and delivery waiting for something to happen, I would start talking about how this was so awesome that we get more experiences by staying up and, and being here for when the three o'clock, there's always a three o'clock rush when, when everybody, pregnant people's cortisol goes down, their bags break and they go into labor. And so I was always like talking about how this was so much better than if we'd go to bed and sleep because we were going to be here for the excitement. And, and that kind of thing actually made me feel less stressed, made me feel less tired. And it reframed the attitude of everybody who was grumbling and cranky and unhappy. Well, also, you can go through a litany of mindfulness. I know that I have this training. I know that if this happens, I know what to do. I know that if this happens, I know what to do. My staff knows that if this happens, they're supposed to do this. I mean, that's Mm -hmm. what a well-trained operating room crew Mm -hmm. does so Mm -hmm. that when this happens, they don't panic and drop the baby. Right. (laughs) Or something. Or... or yeah, the mother, or right? whatever. Yeah. yeah. But but so and that's what pilots train for mm-hmm. and police officers train for. And schools now have uh, live shooter drills for grade school kids. What do you do if a shooter's in the building? You know, you can't just freeze like a deer in the headlight. You're supposed to do something well, that we, maximizes your chance of survival. Back in the uh, '60s, we got under our desks for when nuclear the radar. Bomb. When the, <laughs> yeah. when the nuclear bomb's going to go, bomb get under your gonna... plywood desk. That all help. <laughs> I mean. I think that was just giving us something to do, but it's a good way to handle yeah. um, Give you a fear focused response and yeah, to, that you to make habituate. you think about something else, like do something rather than think. So, so now, in addition to those kinds of trainings, there are a lot of people do what are, is called mindfulness training. Mm-hmm. And in mindfulness training, what you try to do is, is recognize that the past is gone and the future hasn't arrived. Mm -hmm. So you have to live in this exact moment, Mm -hmm. and you can focus on staying in this moment. And and one way that many people do that is through breathing, meditation and deep breathing. Mm -hmm. Concentrate on your breath. Slowing your breathing down. Yeah. Uh, Not only slowing it down, but but be aware of it. Sense it. Feel it. Feel feel the air going through Mm -hmm. your nostrils. Determine if it's, it's wet or dry, cold or warm, slow and steady. Concentrate on your breathing and your heartbeat. When you exhale, concentrate on emptying your lungs. I mean, to the degree that you can focus on the physiology of a single breath, to that degree, you're unfocusing on the stress and the stressors that are trying to race your body. And and you're telling your body, hey, slow down. Slow down. We don't have to race. So what I see in private practice in, in biobalance where we're taking care of people who are usually over 40, who usually have gone through many stresses in their lives, who... Uh-huh. Who, who generally have overcome these stresses or are in the middle of a crisis at the moment that they come to see us because they don't feel well. They're sick. They, they're, they have had all kinds of changes or maybe illnesses, and they want to get healthier. That's their point of being there. They want to feel good again, get their hormones back. But, but many times when we talk about either the past or the present, they are overwhelmed with an incident that happened many years ago and, and, and they haven't been able to either go to counseling or haven't chosen to or they haven't been able to get over that. So PTSD. PTSD. So that is a constant stress on their physical body because their emotion is fear and anxiety and they feel this even though nothing's happening to them right now. Right now, they're <laughs> you're fine. Not, you're not being molested by your grandfather now. He died right. 20 years ago. 
But that molestation right. is still impacting your hyperarousal that says, am I safe? Look around. Is there something there that I should be aware it of? It takes counseling to get past it, that. It, it helps. But it takes counseling and often medicine. But it also takes it also takes that knowledge that what you're worrying about right now either hasn't happened yet or happened a long time ago. Because if you don't think that you that that's worth it, then hear this. At the time of a crisis, if you perpetuate the the anxiety and fear by by not taking care of it, you will be sick. Because what that does to your body is amazing. That's what I wanted to ask you. Talk, talk about how stress affects the body, if you would. So when when you're stressed and your emotions respond to the stress with anxiety and fear, usually mm-hmm. those are the two emotions that we have that respond to a a stress, long term or short short term. Our neurotransmitters. Um, put out all of these neuro I won't go through the list of them the neurotransmitters for fear and anxiety that goes to our and that goes to everywhere but it goes to our pituitary as well our pituitary sends out the stimulation for cortisol from our adrenal and sends out the stimulation for epinephrine from our adrenal so P- uh, ACTH comes from the pituitary goes to our adrenal which is on top of our kidneys and our adrenal sends out a ton of cortisol a ton of epinephrine what that does is it helps us get through a physical crisis, like running from a bear. But but we aren't running from a bear. Or you We're, watch your child wandering out in the street, and a car's coming, right. and you you have to get to them. So many times, those yeah. responses right. are excellent. They're good for us. They right. save our lives or somebody else's. But when we have this ongoing stress, the cortisol keeps coming. the The epinephrine keeps coming. We have a constant state of anxiety and high cortisol. What that does, there's many other things that happen, but what that does is the cortisol lowers our ability to kill cancer cells. It lowers our ability to kill viruses and bacteria. It it lowers our ability to um, use our blood sugar. So basically our blood sugar goes up. We we can get diabetes this way. We gain fat. We gain fat fat in our belly. We we actually have a poor response for infection. Our immune system is suppressed. And we get cancers. The other thing is we get atherosclerosis because our cholesterol goes up. So all of these things happen in response to the emotions of fear fear and anxiety, and those occur at the trigger is stress. So, so these are things that are actual physical things. They do make you sick. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't say that if you were stressed today that you're going to have cancer tomorrow. It doesn't work like that. No, it's over a lifetime. It's, it's like 11 years later from a breast because cancer you cell the getting baseline. the cancer. We have cancer cells that happen all the time. Every day, a cell turns into a cancer cell, and our immune system, our white blood cells go and gobble it up. Like Pac-Man. Yeah, like Pac-Man. Yeah. It's seriously. I mean, yeah. our white cells are just killing off cancer cells all day long so that we have normal bodies. But if our immune system is shut down because there's as somebody's so afraid or, or has so much uh, fear over something, then they're going to be sick years later after that one cell grows big enough for us to find it. So it's understandable that we have stress-causing incidents all the time. You you have to give a speech. You have to give a presentation at work. You go in and ask for a raise. You get fired. Your child gets sick. I mean, things happen all the time Mm -hmm. that create an immediate stress environment. In many ways, you can't fix that. Sometimes you can. You can't avoid those things. Things are going to happen. You can't take yourself out of some situations, but not all. But what we're talking about and what the doctor's book is talking about is the constant endurance of high levels of stress chemicals in our bodies Mm -hmm. for years at a time. There is an additive impact or an Mm -hmm. additive effect because we reset our baseline from wherever it started to how stressful is our life now. So a lot of the patients that you see who are Mm postmenopausal, who are in their 40s, 50s, and beyond, have lived high-impact lives high stress lives, mm-hmm. growing businesses, raising families, being surgeons, Be- being, being athletes, divorced, being divorced, going through divorce, losing yeah. a child. I mean, some of those really terrible yes. life events mm-hmm. are are so big that they remain in a stress in a stress environment. They right. remain stressed and they I mean, remain fearful and anxious. Well, in the book they talk about something called the Holmes Rahe scale, which I've used in And I've in never counseling. heard of before because well, Medicine doesn't talk about it. It calculates the mathematical value for the 20 most stressful experiences that can happen in mm-hmm. your life, like uh, death of a child, 
getting a divorce, getting married, buying a home. I mean, they go through mm-hmm. these things and they say, how many of these things have you experienced in the last year, the last three years, mm-hmm. the last five years? And mm-hmm. then they get a numerical number for what your baseline stress mm-hmm. levels are. And you, you can look at it and say, okay, you got to do something to get these down. And medicine helps. Mm-hmm. There are medicines that can mm-hmm. help your body. They, they put a floor and ceiling in mm-hmm. your, your body so that it can't overreact and it help you calm down. Right. But in, And then you've got to change your life mm-hmm. or change the way that you think about your life in these circumstances. A mm-hmm. uh, man named Victor Frankel uh, wrote a book about his experiences in concentration camps in mm-hmm. World War II. He was in the camps as mm-hmm. a, a prisoner. And people were asking me, how did you survive? Horrible, horrible things. And he said, what I learned was if you can't change the reality, I couldn't get myself out of there, I couldn't stop them from killing my family and my friends, then you have to change your perception of the right. reality. Right. And so if you can do that mm-hmm. successfully, you can reduce the stress level, you can help maximize the chance that your body will stay healthy. Well, give an example of that because that, that's something that a counselor would be able to help you with, but I don't know that I would have a good answer or example for it. Um, if you have a situation, uh, you're a wife, mm-hmm. and your husband is abusive. Mm-hmm. And he's physically violent, and he gets drunk, and he creates crisis in the house. And you live in fear of his coming home mm-hmm. because you don't know what's going to happen when he gets home. And so you are hyper aroused and hyper anxious mm-hmm. when he comes in the door to try to read his mood, read his expression, mm-hmm. and you try to do all these things. I, I've to give talked you to a, a abused early wives warning system. who say, "I knew it's my fault that he, he Which exploded it isn't. and beat me." Uh, and, it is and the children <laughs> because I put butter in the corn and I know he doesn't like butter in the corn but I you know and so, so then they take on that guilt and that responsibility mm-hmm. and that's pressure and stress but they also have the fear of him mm-hmm. and so what we would try to do is say let's look at the reality you know realistically is putting butter in the corn a justification for a man hitting a woman is there a justification for a man hitting a woman well no I don't think so and if they're honest they can get to a place where they say, I don't think so either, if they can get mm-hmm. past the fear. So if there's no justification for it, then is there an alternative behavior? Is there something else that you can do? Well, to is there an avoid, alternative behavior well, yeah, to that? get a divorce. Well, get that's a, get a I was saying, sort of divorce. Uh, get yeah, him into get counseling. Out of the get situation. him into treatment. But right. find a, a way forward mm-hmm. besides hunkering down and enduring, besides living with a high level of stress and fear. Mm-hmm. Take, take ownership, take freedom, take responsibility. Mm-hmm. But you have to learn how to do that because they don't come to my office knowing how to do that. And so my job is to help them, first of all, find that calm space that they can, safe place, Mm -hmm. safe holding environment is what I call it, and then help them consider strategies for modifying their relationship with him, Mm -hmm. for trying to modify his behavior. But if it won't modify, then take their own path forward, whatever that requires. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... That is a path forward, but say you're in a concentration camp. There's no path forward. How do you change so, what you're thinking what, when you're in a situation that you can't change? What Viktor Frankl said that he learned to think about, well, what are the things that I can see here that are beautiful, that are life-affirming? I see people who are starving take some of their minimal food and give it to the person next to them that's sick. Mm -hmm. That is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. That's a togetherness and a brotherhood thing that says, even though we're in the midst of all this wickedness and evil, Mm -hmm. there's goodness and there's love. Mm -hmm. And that has value, and Mm -hmm. I can hold on to that. So he gave examples of those kinds of behaviors that even in that environment, he could identify and focus on that helped him survive another day, Mm -hmm. get through today and see what's out there tomorrow. So so in reality, your brain controls... The response of your body and how your body balances itself. Your brain can calm you down. I mean, many people use yoga. Many people use prayer. Many people use reframing, like what you said, looking for the goodness in something in a bad situation. Everybody should develop a way around this, a way to to change their mind so that their body follows. Because if you don't, your body continues to break down and illness always follows. You, you can't go through this kind of thing and you not can, be ill. You can learn self-hypnosis. You can learn how to put yourself in a trance and calm yourself down. You can learn to reality test and see how much risk or danger is really here. How much mm-hmm. am I at risk for? Uh, people that had a bad encounter with a neighbor's dog when they were four or five mm-hmm. and the dog bit them have a fear of dogs. 
-hmm. and they can learn that they don't have to be afraid of all the dogs. They can learn to look at a dog and see if there's an element of risk. Mm -hmm. Uh, They can look at a dog and say, the dog that bit me was a great big pit bull. This is a little chihuahua. I'm not, I mean, they they can override the adrenalized Mm -hmm. reflex reaction of the flight or fight mechanism. So what I find in my practice is that people come in with this history mm-hmm. and then they, they check that they have anxiety or fears or depression. And they're coming to me because they don't feel well. So I work backwards. I try to make them as, as well as I can by replacing all the things that have gone by the wayside because they've been so stressed. You so patch, I, patch the damage that the physiology has experienced. Right. I'm trying to repair that damage by giving them the hormones that they need back, thyroid, testosterone, estrogen. Uh, I'm trying to get down the estrone level, which is that old lady, old man estrogen that gives you the belly fat and goes along with high cortisol. I'm trying to bring that down by giving testosterone or Arimidex. I use that type of, you you fix the hormones first, then you fix some other things. Maybe they've developed prediabetes or diabetes because of all the stress they've had in their life. Their blood sugar is constantly up because of stress, so it stays up. So we treat that with some medicine and diet and exercise. So I get them as healthy as I can possibly get them, and if we get to the end point and they feel happier and relieved and less anxious, I mean, I'm working, I I understand I'm working backwards. I'm not working from the head down. I'm working from the body up. It's a two-edged sword. If we get one piece of it, one edge under control, then we can work on the other edge, whichever way that needs to go. And sometimes people actually just feel so much better Mm -hmm. that they don't still feel anxious and afraid. If they still do, then, or even in the beginning, I'll suggest counseling, but then I'll say, you know, this last piece I can't get better. It's been there too long. So you need to unravel it with a counselor Mm -hmm. and you need to go just talk about it. I mean, sometimes talking is just like throwing up. It gets rid of it. So there are two strategies that Dr. Colbert talks about in his book Mm -hmm. for adjusting your stress levels. One is to recognize that not all stress is equal. Not Uh all things that stress us are equally risky or damaging. Mm -hmm. So we can learn to evaluate that or assess it. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is we need to learn how to turn stress off. We need to learn how to shut down the stress reaction that our body's having. And that, uh, is through mindfulness, through exercise, through uh, conversion or diversion. I used to uh, talk to people that in, in marital situations that were really getting distressed with one another. And I never used it, but there was a, uh, there was a, a technique where they used batakas, which are foam rubber bats. Uh, <laughs> and they'd hit each other with a bataka. When and they'd say, say or do something that yeah, bothered them? Yeah, they, they, when you, you'd say something made me mad, I'd whack you. But that wasn't a skill or technique that I ever used or recommended, but I studied it. But what I would recommend is go down to the basement, take a, and teenagers especially that are getting out of control, mm-hmm. take a wiffle ball bat and beat the hell out of one of the support strands in mm-hmm. the basement and say out loud whatever you need to say. Call mm-hmm. names, cuss, whatever you need to do. Burn through all that and let it out of your body. Mm-hmm. you you got to feel it. you got to label it. you got to externalize it. Okay. That's- but not in a way that causes more problems. Not in a way where you're screaming at a cop or a judge, uh, or, or a husband or wife, uh, a parent. Right. Because this stuff will come out somehow. It's got to boil out. So exactly. if, if, if it, it Find it a will. safe place to vomit. <laughs> That's right. Find, find a place where you can get rid of this. Yes. And if you, if you don't have the ability, then get help. Either get help right. can physically, get help counseling, or both, so that you can get rid of the fear and anxiety of life. Because I have to say, it's not just that each... Each stress is not the same. It's that each person that I see, some people come in and they've got 20 terrible things happening to them. And I don't know why they have 20 terrible things. And somebody else has a, has a, no, um, you don't know. They but what has, you has a do nail know. coming off and is freaked out over it. I mean, <laughs> they both kind of present the same with the same kind of fear, but you know, but it's not an equal, it, equal burden of stress. Everybody's different. Everybody's different. And it's not, justified. You didn't earn the right to have all the stress. It just happened. But you have to do something with it because if you don't do something with it, if you don't learn how to handle it, it'll eventually cripple and kill your body. I used to just say, God loves me a lot. For In the first part of my practice, I had years of just horrible, unrelenting stress with partners and other disasters, business-wise, not medically, hmm. business, with the business. 
And I just say, God loves me because he's putting me through these stresses so I can help other people go through stresses. And I would actually make that, that actually made me feel better. Some mantra like that is helpful. And you have to find one that works for your example mm -hmm. in your life. And that's what counselors can help you learn to do. So if this is a, a part of your life, which it, I'm sure it's part of everyone's life, but if it's really bothering you and, and you have anxiety and fear, then we hope that this has helped you kind of sort it out and understand what it's doing to your body so that you can attend to it, not just put it off, so that you don't get sick. So that's what we're hoping for you today. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.